So Taffler is disappointed uh, by the war in the sense that it hasn't met his expectations uh, and there is no sort of monolithic, evil, um, or gigantic, uh, Goliath-like uh, enemy uh, on the other side of uh, the battlefield. It's just a, a soldier, another David, uh, one David against another. So just an ordinary man just like him. Uh, also kind of throwing stones, um, shooting their guns. Uh, it's not this kind of um, monolithic uh, bad guy that he thinks uh, that he wants sort of the challenge of overcoming. Um, so uh, in a sense, you know, the war is uh, not meeting the expectations of uh, Taffler who uh, you know, he would have been like another, you know, any other young man who read stories about uh, war and would have sort of had a glorified or glamorized image of what it's like to be a soldier. Uh, so, you know, uh, I think the expectations are heightened and uh, you imagine yourself as almost like a, a cowboy or something coming in and, and shooting your gun at the bad guys and... Uh, you know, he sees it uh, as a disappointment in the fact that it's just a bunch of uh, men shooting at each other and there is no uh, real sense of uh, greatness or accomplishment. Um, and uh, Robert uh, finds in Taffler uh, an, a model that he can emulate, a person who can he can look up to, uh, page 31. Um, Robert, uh, he was thinking about, he was thinking that perhaps he'd found the model he could emulate, a man to whom killing wasn't killing at all, but only throwing. Bam, a bottle. A man to whom war wasn't good enough unless it was bigger than he was. Bam, a David. A man who made his peace with stones. Uh, so, uh, Taffler's expertise is mastery of, uh, the military world, of killing, shooting, uh, being a war hero, all of this uh, makes him kind of uh, the right kind of man for Robert to uh, want to strive to become, uh, to emulate um, and put up on a pedestal. So Taffler, you know, largely embodies uh, all of the sort of he hegemonic qualities of masculinity that uh, uh, Robert would be sort of taught to look for in a... Uh, um, male role model. Uh, so he's physically, you know, strong and uh, tall, and he's an athlete and a war hero. So, uh, on the surface, at least, uh, Taffler embodies everything that a man is supposed to be, everything that a soldier is supposed to be. Uh, but uh, once we get to the uh, Laos Town episode, uh, the figure of Taffler becomes a lot more complex. Right? He's not just uh, this two-dimensional man. There's a lot more going on uh, beneath the surface of uh, this character. Uh, and Robert's uh, sort of expectations of masculinity become shattered uh, at this moment uh, when he uh, visits the Laos town brothel. So uh, Robert and the other soldiers, before they go overseas, they decide to visit uh, the brothel. And this would be a sort of a form of another kind of rite of passage for these young men uh, to, uh, you know, have a um, sexual relationship before they leave overseas, right? So uh, to become a man, again, you know, there's this script uh, that you're supposed to follow where you have uh, sex for the first time and you know this is one way that you prove your masculinity or prowess as a man. Uh, so Robert goes along with this uh, sort of homosocial peer pressure uh, to visit the brothel prior to uh, being shipped overseas. And uh, Robert, the way that it's described, uh, he says it's like a coercive uh, peer pressure situation. So at the bottom of page 32, uh, Robert had to be coerced into going against his better judgment, but the coercion wasn't, was simple. He was shamed into going. If you didn't go, you were peculiar. It was that simple. The barracks and the boarding school leave little room for the individual when it comes to sex. 
Either you do or you don't, and if you don't, you face a kind of censure most men would rather avoid. As for it, its being against his better judgment, Robert was certain he would fail. So in this instance, you know, we see uh, the homosocial enactment of masculinity at work here, where you have a group of young men uh, all pressuring each other uh, to go along with this uh, experience. Um, and if you didn't, if you said no, if you said, no, I don't want to do that, uh, you were labeled uh, peculiar, right? Um, so this would be a kind of social or uh, gender policing uh, where you would be shamed, uh, humiliated, excluded, uh, and labeled, uh, you know, as, you know, not manly enough if you didn't go through with this uh, situation. Uh, so already, you know, Robert uh, is coerced into it against his better judgment. Uh, he doesn't want to participate, but, you know, this is sort of a peer pressure moment. Um, and the fellow soldiers uh, coerce him into going. Uh, he's also convinced to attend or to uh, participate in this uh, because he sees... Um, uh, tied up uh, Taffler's dog. So this is at the bottom of page 33. So um, Robert recognized the dog uh, and uh, the bottle and the horse. So all of these things that are associated with uh, Taffler, who has become his kind of role model. Uh, so he knows at that instance that, you know, well, if Taffler is doing this, then I have to do it because I want to uh, become like Taffler, right, who is this hegemonic uh, male figure who he's supposed to emulate and model himself after. Uh, so we have a Robert going against his better judgments. He knows he's going to fail, so he uh, is not setting himself up for um, any success. And he's really intimidated by uh, the women um, at the brothel. And the fact that these young men are, you know, participating in, um, you know, prostitution, uh, attending the brothel, uh, it also speaks to the time period of how, you know, women were um, treated or used as sort of sexual objects. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you gained your reputation as a man by sleeping with a woman and um, exploiting women in this way. So there is that as well. Uh, but the women at the brothel intimidate uh, Robert. Um, she, Ella, is this uh, prostitute that flirts with him. And uh, she just seems, you know, very overtly sexual. And it's over so overwhelming for him. He's so sort of young and naive and innocent and, uh, you know, just uh, awkward. And, uh, you know, it becomes you know, frightening to him even, right? So it's uh, this kind of panic um, overtakes him. So anytime he experiences something he feels uncomfortable with or that's disturbing him or his sense of normalcy or the way his mind uh, cannot fully comp comprehend something or handle something, he starts stammering. Uh, his brain starts stammering. He starts panicking. And that's what happens in uh, this brothel situation. He experiences a kind of sexual panic. And uh, he calls it a failure. Uh, but um, there is this moment where he, uh, you know, gets overly excited, we'll say, and, uh, you know, doesn't fulfill the sexual act, right? So he doesn't ever, uh, he doesn't lose his virginity in this moment. He doesn't uh, complete the act. Uh, so saying it more directly, he ejaculates in his pants, right? So <laughs> we'll uh, put it that way, just to be clear. Uh, so this is a, a failure uh, in terms of his approving his manliness, his prowess. Uh, he kind of fails to meet that the expectations of masculinity in this moment. So, uh, you know, Finley's doing something there. We, he's disrupting uh, the, the sort of gender scripts of uh, masculinity and male prowess. So he's showing a young man who's, uh, you know, innocent, naive, and awkward, and 
it's you know kind of a realistic portrayal one that you don't usually get uh in a war story either so uh he's definitely giving us uh a, a flawed human uh vulnerable uh character rather than this tough um you know macho uh war hero figure right so robert ross is very unconventional in that regard and it's really Ella, the female prostitute, who becomes the kind of aggressive one, right? Uh, so she's the domineering, sort of dominant one in this episode. Uh, and she's the one who's being very forceful and overtly sexual and uh, really sort of taking the aggressive position. Um, and so there's sort of a gender role reversal going on as well, uh, where Robert's almost like in the passive um feminized position and Ella the female prostitute is always the like the masculine and more aggressive one so uh, we have some sort of blurring of the lines in terms of you know gender roles and uh, sexuality in the scene and it's also sort of reiterated uh, in the next uh, scene when Robert is uh, coerced into viewing what is happening in the room uh, next to him and that's where we get uh, the scene between uh, Taffler and the Swede. So there is also a male prostitute uh, who is at this brothel and uh, Robert will uh, witness a, a sexual uh, relationship occurring in the next room between uh, the Swedish man who had his tongue cut out and who's a mute and Taffler who again we've only known him as this kind of hegemonic male character and here he is engaged in a homosexual uh, relationship uh, with this other male prostitute so it's a very uh, shocking moment and uh, Robert it's a uh, sort of uh, causes him to almost lose his mind in that moment when he sees uh, his uh, the man he put on a pedestal engaged in this uh, illicit affair with a man. So it's a shocking moment of panic for uh, Robert Ross, who up to this point is very sort of naive and um, sexually innocent. Uh, 